What's up, Duck fans? We're here on this season's first episode of the Players Lounge. I'm Emerson Edom, your host. Uh, with me, we got Ryan Strom, Alex Kalorn, and Radko Gudas. Now, uh, Stromer, you've been here for a little bit now. I'm going to uh, pass it off to the, the newcomers here. Uh, Alex and Radko, how has your first little stretch here in, in SoCal been? Um, you know, what restaurants have you hit up here recently? And, and overall, what do you like about uh, your time here in California? Well, I think the transition has been smooth. My uh, my family is enjoying it. The uh, the crew settled nice, and they're going to school, so it's uh, more time for myself. And um, yeah, it's it's great. The the beach is close by. The 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 guys on the team are awesome, so they made me feel welcome. And uh, I feel like I've been here a little longer than I than I am. And um, slowly uh, finding the new places to go or finding places like I've been sent to Solanes, and I'm enjo- I enjoyed it. So it was uh, it was a nice place to hit. So um, yeah, that would be. One of the first spots I would recommend as well for somebody. Cool, cool. Uh, Alex? You? Yeah, so I'm in a little bit of a different situation than Radco. I don't uh, have four kids, but just me and the fiance, we're, we're settling great. Um, you know, the weather, you can't beat the weather here. It's like inside and outside temperatures exactly the same. So a nice change from the Florida summers that I was coming from. The oceans, like I was telling you before, eight-minute walk. Um, guys are great. I'm on the team, so everything's good. I, I, I'm. I, I really like the, the transition. <laughs> Can you explain the um, laugh when you looked at uh, Ryan there? Is no, there the guys are good. <laughs> um, I think we're all kind of not me myself because I've had a broken finger, but I think everyone's kind of dealing with this training camp. It's been pretty intense, and everyone's looking forward to starting the season. Cool. Um, God, the the stars in this room are, are so bright. I'm gonna have to put, 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 on, put on the put on the shades. My there brewery acts. Um, Ryan. You know, you've been here for some time. And there's a little bit of rumbling that people are worried about how much content creation you're doing. This is being your fourth time here on the the Players Lounge. Like, you get a sense that people are on you a little bit for the content creation, and 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 you know more so than your play. No, they don't let me say no. I try not to. <laughs> I, they keep dragging me back in here. But uh, if I'm going to add anything to the introductions, Radko says he has four kids. It's four kids that feels like 40 kids when he comes over. So they, got, they, 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 they pack quite the punch when the Gudis has come over. So when yeah. the, uh, when the, uh, nav- when the navigator rolls up and they start flying out of there, it's, it's awesome. They, uh, it's, it's awesome to bring in guys that have like big families and stuff. It always adds an awesome dynamic. And, uh, I had just had like a small glimpse of it. My daughter turned two and they came over and it was like his oldest daughter, what she's seven, right? Yep, she was right. like the team captain for the kids, like holding awesome. the kids down. They had kids flying everywhere. It was fantastic. So anytime you can add guys that are good guys and have good families and, and all that stuff, it definitely makes it easier too. So a good plug to the Gouda's family there. Navigator. What what made you go with the Navigator as your, you know, as the mommy car? <laughs> I, uh, that's, <laughs> we had a, we had a, um, in the minors, we had one time we couldn't practice on our arena and we had a car show in our, in Syracuse. And we had this huge Navigator in the middle of it and, I was sitting in there. I was like, this is going to be my car one time. <laughs> and then I ended up having a second kid. We couldn't fit all in the car. And then my wife came over with a uh, little different hair and with the, like, hey, we might, uh, you know, we're having another one. I'm like, oh, boy, we need a we need a third row. I was thinking about the yellow bus, too, but that's, <laughs> that's, for, the fu- that's for future. Nice, nice. Um, so, you know, let's 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 get into it. I think the fans out there want to just hear you know, so, some locker room stuff. Like, I'm just going to toss it out. Like, is there any guys on the team, maybe a little funky smelling equipment? Like, is, is there anyone who was a little bit funkier smelling, you know, shoulder pads or, or is everyone kind of clean and tight this year in that room? I don't know. Shomer, you, you've been, you've been around longer than me. It seems was, like the equipment guys do a pretty yeah, good job for breezing everything down. Everyone so. smells okay, but there's definitely some guys that can take the, the, uh, the abuse a little more than others. So I think, <laughs> That's always the best part of the dressing room, you know? I mean, like, you've been a player, like, you know, the practices and everything are fun, but, like, when you can just, you know, shoot the breeze with the boys, that's the best part. So there's already been some chirping going on, and Killer's quite the golfer. We had him out for a few golf rounds now, so that's, you know, adds for a little bit of banter, which is good. So I think whenever you have new teammates and a new group of guys, like, anytime you get together off the ice, it kind of brings, the you know, the conversation together. And, um, you know, Killer's in the fantasy football, I think, right, for the first time. First time playing fantasy football, so... 
Um, and I, I feel really honored because I just found out that Jamie Drysdale has not been allowed to play. And he's been trying to play. <laughs> and I've never played fantasy football before ever. And Cam really wanted me to play. So um, he's not allowed to play. Why? I don't know. He's, he hasn't had, he, he hasn't earned it. He, he hasn't earned his invite, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a certain number of guys in the league, but um, no, he, he didn't get a chance to play. So I feel pretty honored being my first year, my first time ever playing fantasy football. I thought it was also interesting too that the wives and the girls have a fantasy football cool. league. So. That's cool. I mean, I guess. I mean, all of us run their league, so it's not. That's that's not true. <laughs> you just expose yourself. <laughs> I haven't done one thing. I drafted her team, but you know, I feel like there's a lot of guys that are lying about that that they didn't, you know, draft their their girls' teams. But it just makes watching football easier when the wives have to watch it too. Get a little extra time. <laughs> she doesn't watch it still. So. Oh. Fantasy. It must have been a decade now since I attempted to do my first fantasy team, but I I literally couldn't. It's one time a week. You got to set your roster. And yeah. I think you can even do it automatic, but for I couldn't dial it in. I couldn't dial in setting my roster one time a week. It's crazy with baseball, you know, a hundred and whatever odd games, you know, setting your roster each and every time. But once a week, I couldn't dial it in, which is crazy. So I'm like, no, I'm done. It's I'm good done. though. Like even. those, those are the types of things I think are good for a team. Like, you yeah. know, like it just makes when you don't really know a guy and you're like, Hey, I'll take a guy off your hands. Like you start yeah. making a trade with a guy and you get his number and you text with them and whatever. And, it's just like small banter like that. So I think, you know, when you have new guys, I mean, you, these guys have been around, so it's a seamless transition. But, um, you know, that's good team stuff. And um, I think your team's actually like unreal, right? Did you- I think I wasn't first until <laughs> yeah. um, last the last week. So, yeah. Who would you pick Beginners first? Who would who, 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 you pick My first? first pick? I don't remember. I think it like, might have been Devontae yeah. Adams. No. Did you have the last pick of the draft? Yeah, it's second last. But I'm trying to think of who I picked. I think it was Devontae Adams. Good team. Good team. What about good you? Good team who, overall. Who, who, who was your first pick? Uh, McCaffrey. Cool. Christian McCaffrey. Well, so, that's yeah. the best pick. Yeah. And I mean, best Rat- GM gets the best pick. Radko, are you playing fantasy? <laughs> no, I'm managing no. the four little ones running around <laughs> as much as I can handle. Yeah. <laughs> GM oh, of the household. Good stuff. Yeah. So, okay, we talked fantasy. Uh, what about golf? You mentioned golf. Newcomers, like who's just lights out golf o- overall game, and then who just shanks them, and it just shouldn't be out there. Well, apparently, Dostal yesterday at the golf tournament had a uh, set of lefties and righties in his cart. <laughs> Switch Smith game, man. Because he didn't know what he was. <laughs> mm-hmm. like so that's, that's the toughest thing. Sounds like me. But uh, no, Killer is a good golfer. There's a lot of good golfers. Uh, hockey guys are usually good. Yeah. And um, yeah, anytime you can, like I said, like we had a day off, we had, I think, eight or 12 guys out there. So it's good. Cool. Something to do. Get the boys together. Cool. And now, just in. in Sound out maybe low key, you know, uh, gamer. Is is that what I, I hear? Uh, a little bit. We haven't. I haven't turned my computer on in a few months. But uh, once the new Call of Duty comes out, I'll probably have to get back on. I heard Call of Duty, and actually, one of my best buddies, Matt Nieto, who's now with the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, he was ranked number like eighth in the world really? when he was when he was playing with Colorado. Wow. He was ranked, I think, eighth in the world, eighth or ninth. And yeah, I guess he was trying to. McKinnon wanted him to, you know showing the robe so he was giving him a lesson and stuff like that it's a little fun fact call of yeah. duty call of duty yeah Jeez. i don't know yeah. what his ranking is we got now, some good but... players jones is probably our best player okay but we it's a team effort in call of duty so. and you bring it on the road do you bring um, the... sometimes like depends on the sensitive trip. sensitive subjects <laughs> <this year, I laughs> yeah. was already brought up so yeah, it depends on the trip i think uh i never ever brought it like ever until covid and then we couldn't really do anything and then guys started bringing it like more than ever so um i don't know I'm not going to name names. Guys but are some, on that. some guys literally strap it to the back of the plane seat. Yeah, I don't. I'm not going to name names. Yeah. I, I, you know, but anyway. Yeah, guys are addicted. Guys are addicted a little okay, bit. There <laughs> used to be the used to be a suitcase now that you yeah, can the just suitcase. open the up suitcase. on the plane. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'd rather play cards on the plane or something. But I mean, to yeah. each their own, I guess. Cards. Who's who's good? Who? Who cheats too? Are there any cheaters? No like, che- are there any like, are there any guys who you know? <laughs> not, not that we've caught yet. You know, toss a couple if cards. If on. there's one guy that would cheat, it'd be Frank for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why? 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 Why do you see that? He, he just likes because he's done it before. Yeah. Hates losing. <laughs> Competitive. Yeah. 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 No, it's good. We got we got one car table, one uh, Catan table, board game table. So, we got a couple open seats this year. So we got to fill those roster spots soon. Cool. So we'll see. Can't wait for a trip. Yeah, let's go. Cool. And so for, you know, Radko and Alex, like what, and, and let's dial in some nicknames here before we begin. What Radko nickname for the fans uh, you go by? 
Goods or Butch. Goods, okay. Or Butch. Yeah. Goods or Butch. Alex? People just call me Killer. Killer. And Turkish. for the new Turkish. Ducks fans who <laughs> just sure. maybe tune in for the first time, favorite team is now new. It's the Ducks. What do you go by? Ryan. I've always been Stromer, Stromer. but Crows... Uh, Stromy. Stromy, okay. And he tends to say it a lot. <laughs> and, and and how's your feelings regarding I, Stromy? I'm good. You know, if, you're, if your name's getting out there, you're doing, you're doing something. <laughs> Whether good or bad, you're getting noticed. I don't care. Whatever the guys want to call me. Goods. Uh, the difference between Florida so far and just being here off ice, on ice, can you touch on that? Uh, I, we, I haven't had the season yet, so it's, it's hard yeah. to say the big difference, but like just – just being able to be outside in the afternoon, like Killer said, like it's a big difference in this time of the year. We can just go out and do stuff and like um, playing tennis and playing or go to the beach. You know, in Florida, you wait until the evening or the day off or the weekend in the morning just to get there so you don't get the burn down and you can actually have some juices. So for, for me, the, the biggest thing is being able to be outside for most of the day and not uh, not have to going and hiding from the from the sun, you know, that was, uh, that was a big thing. So, um, been on some, in some tough places, hey, eh? <laughs> Florida, now, Cali. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to make it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and killer. What about you? Kind of the same things as, uh, Goody was saying. Um, the weather here is just great. Like if you were going to do a beach day in Florida, it, it was a whole day thing yeah. or it was a day off where it was like 30, 40 minutes away and you kind of had to plan it. Whereas here you just kind of take a five minute stroll down the street and you're cool. there and you could kind of, you know, not get too <laughs> baked out in the sun or, yeah. or whatever. But yeah, I think difference is, you know, getting to the arena is a little bit more difficult out yeah. here just in terms of traffic and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the weather. And You've only done it once. Yeah, I've done, <laughs> I've done it one time and I'm already complaining. Um, <laughs> but uh, the golf's great. Um, so I'm not complaining so you, about that. So you're saying just Tampa or California, you're taking the golf courses here in California overall than, than Florida? I'm, I don't know about that. I mean, the diff, the difficult part is there's a lot of like public courses out here. Whereas in Tampa, we had private course memberships. So it was kind of easier to finagle ways to get out and play. We're kind of still working on it here, but there are some great public tracks. Like I live right beside Pelican Hill, which is, um, which is awesome. So you just kind of have to navigate through it. Whereas in, in Florida, you had your course that you would just go to whenever, you know? Yeah. You were there for so long too, right? So yeah. you had all the connections. Oh yeah, I That's just couldn't handle the stickiness. Just being outside in that way, like the humidity, I'll never, I, I could never get used to. Well, yeah, I mean, and then in, you come here, it's just perfect, right? It's, it's perfect. Just, yeah, even for my fiance, who's like born, raised Florida, when she got here, she was like, "Whoa, like the weather is so nice." So, um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I love the weather too. If I'm gonna make a comment, my uh, my power went out the other night for like 12 hours, and I'm like, you too know much, what? Too much gaming? Or? No, no. The transformer was like gonna blow in the backyard. Actually, was bad. It was probably like, it was good. Probably was, Goody's daughter when she came yeah, over. It could have been Goody's summer. daughter. I think she did a sumo slam off the power lines or something. Yeah, they had the pair of pliers walking out. I don't know, I don't know where they found them. But uh, no, because like in most climates, like if your power goes out, like it's either way too cold or way too hot. But it was like we literally just kept like a window open. It was like. Slept yeah. perfectly. It was beautiful. So it's uh, we're definitely really lucky with that. And like being outside, just like I feel so healthy every day. Like yeah. having kids, like you're just outside. Like I feel like it helps you like recover and feel good. Like just like being in, you can wear a sweater, you can wear a t-shirt, whatever. My kids are naked in the backyard half the time in the mm -hmm. in the pool or water doing whatever. So it's it's great. And I th I think also like the bugs is something that people oh. don't talk about. Like. Someone told me, I don't know, you could tell me this is true. Is there like a, a tax for like a mosquito tax that's put on in California? Or is that a lot? I, I would have no thought clue. the same for Florida. I mean, does Florida not? Terrible mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, but there's, well, you're saying there's there's very little here. Very little. Very here. little here. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. when I walk down my street, people's doors are wide open. And I don't, I don't. No, those people leave, are just weird. I leave, like honestly, open. I, I or, still or, close or, the, or they have the, the door that's halfway. You know, it's like a half door and like the, fr it's the just, and they let the, they let the breeze come through their house. Yeah. Whereas in Florida, it's just, there's so many bugs and it gets so hot that that's, like, so I mean, you just see outside. It's the nice. The Minnesota guys talk about being on the lake all day, but Minnesota in, in the summer when those, those bad mosquitoes bugs. are just really different bad. Ball eh? game. Yeah. yeah. No, I leave my door open like all day for the breeze. It's awesome. Like our door splits in half and the top's open. And you don't have any mosquito problems. Nope. No. 
He lives in a really nice neighborhood, so <laughs> just keeps his door wide open. Not what worried the, about anyone. What do you think? I have a mosquito tax on my street? <laughs> well, the, mosquito, the, 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 the mosquitoes actually like a certain type of blood. Like my my wife is I don't sweet know, people. Oposa, you yeah, know, I don't yeah, know the yeah. blood, but Same with it's, my fiance. it's good. So I don't get touched, but my wife gets eaten alive. It's crazy. Yeah, I get Same. eaten alive and back home bad. Yeah, but here nothing. One of the one of the perks. Yeah. And uh, what's going on with your, your brother these days? Like, uh, you know, or your brothers, brothers but uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they're in, uh, I think their team's actually on some like random like uh, golf trip right now for the Caps. That would have been nice. Pretty ideal. It's a pretty uh, wild time to go on a golf trip though. So uh, he's good. He's just, you know, grinding through training camp. Yeah. He just had a second kid. So he's kind of, I think his getaway for this golf trip is a little more uh, just like stress relief from the house a little bit. But, so uh, Crow, Crow's not throwing a, a golf trip for, for the boys? <laughs> no. I did. I did. We you were know. we were lucky enough to um, me and Goody were kind of we had the golf tournament yesterday. So we were just driving around the cart. So we got to see Crow hit a couple of shots. So how was good. it? Yeah, be, actually, be careful. Be careful. Yeah. What you say. What? No, it, Fant- it, fantastic uh, form. I wouldn't say fantastic, <laughs> but it was better than I expected wow. for sure. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he was pretty impressive and he was. He was funny with his teammates, so it was uh, it was a pretty good day. Probably scared of them. Oh yeah, they were they were petrified. Nice, nice. And uh, what was your group? I mean, uh, business people. Like, uh, did you? Did uh, we you, didn't we, we didn't play, so he played. We won. Um, My group won. won. Yeah. Would you win? I don't know. I left. I didn't stay for the ceremony. Apparently, there's Roll an orange. Tape. There's and an orange ja- orange jacket though. Apparently, <laughs> I did see that. Yeah. Z had that on today. No, are you, are they gonna get it to you? You think? Or they, they said they would. I don't know. Would we'll he rock it? Yeah, for a picture or something, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to wear it to a game or anything. But uh, how Stromer style? I mean, you guys are new, but from what you've seen, I haven't seen it. I'm right t- in I the mean, middle. Nothing to worry yeah. about. No comments. Well, so you play? He wasn't asking. I don't long. think he was asking you. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I listen. We just got here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems pretty good to me. You were tripping, you, you were tripping my golf clothes though. I think. No, I wasn't. My when? shoes, maybe. No, or was that Frank? Or it's probably Frank. Yeah. I don't feel like I know guys well enough to really. Start chirping who likes to it. spend it like you know we're talking about style like who likes to just absolutely you know they're going to be in the louis store or you know when you get into chicago who's going to be at barney's right across the street labushkin guys decked out safe, yeah safe the there. russian guys for sure i mean yeah he's taught he's always decked out top to bottom he's already he's got the nice rolex he's got a nice the, range too the nice range he's got yeah you know he likes the finer things in life and i can appreciate that um, out of Bush. i can see him there too though me mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more su- yeah a little bit more subtle but Most, one i don't mind, over but i don't mind spending <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay we talked about spending it who's who's on the cheaper side i mean not these guys just got in here stromer like you know who, who's a guy who's not gonna pay for dinner like who's you know who, who's on the cheaper side i don't know we got a couple of guys with new contracts so we'll, we'll see maybe first couple <laughs> of nights on the road you know how the dinners yeah. go a couple uh-huh. uh, a couple of guys making some nice coin now so no, we actually don't really have. Uh, I wouldn't say anyone that's really cheap. Everyone's um, everyone's honest. Everyone yeah, everyone's pretty, pitches in. Everyone so far has been pretty good. I mean, um, I think we're all lucky to have wives that do a lot of the spending for us, and the guys just, <laughs> it's usually the guys just trying to pull the reins back on everyone. But uh, no, I can't say anyone's too cheap. I would say if anyone. I would say like low key our coaches like they hawk the food at the rink like I've never seen like like they're taking like containers and stuff. It's like boys like there's Sounds a grocery like store like oh, <laughs> they love it. But no, no one. I don't. I don't know. I don't really consider anyone being cheap necessarily. Yeah, it's cool. different in the camp. Guys are at the hotel. They stack up. Yeah, you can't really tell them during the camp. Yeah. But once the season yeah. hits, yeah, then you can. Once I'm, you go to your first dinner and play credit card roulette and you see the guy starting to sweat that's when you kind of kind of figure it out but yeah we haven't gotten there yet so we got a team rule now anyone over a three-year deal has to buy a team dinner starting this year so we got a couple guys that are on the for dinners <laughs> love it what uh what about juniors like you know i played a mess in hat radco uh, you played it uh one season in everett i mentioned i think what was it first episode uh one of the, one of the earlier episodes that we we're all shaking in our boots uh, you know knowing that we were going to face you like honestly like we <laughs> we knew we saw just like on the roster we're reading through the the pregame book you're listed at the height and weight that you are uh you know what was your overall experience just in everett uh because i gotta say by playing you i said it here on the show or at least my show um, we were just terrified of playing you yeah. and good things to come for this Ducks team because you're already showing it. Like what, what from Everett juniors, what, what do you like most about juniors? And, uh, yeah, just touch on that. 
No, I had a I had a great time in junior. I can't believe you guys felt this way. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, it was it was it was different for me because I I played two three years already with like pros and adults. Like my teammates were 15, 16 years older than me as I was starting to play. So I was ready for the big bodies, you know, the two two thirty pound guys you know and then going back to play against 16 70 year old guys it was a little i would say unfair for for most of them because i just <laughs> didn't know how to hold myself back i had to go 100 110 percent in every check and then some guys took uh yeah but you already Didn't had the beard it. though right you yeah. have the same exact beard now <laughs> that you did that's how when i was eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i was eight, 18 years they old made and me we were just it. terrified yeah. yeah they made me shave it i had to shave three times a week the coach was like nope bus cut and uh no beard. I'm like, what do you mean? No beard. I have so many scars. I have to shave every <laughs> yeah, two yeah, days. Yeah. yeah, you shave every two days. So I come to the ring with like little cuts from the shaving from my own. And I'm like, I can't, uh -huh. I can't shave every week. I'm going to trim it every week. And then I had like little yeah, five o'clock shadow every, every day, but it was good. It was, it was a great year. Everett's like great town for me. I, I had Craig Hartsburg as the coach, Jay Vardy. So those guys were really big names. Really good uh, guys for me to introduce me to North America, and then uh, two years in Norfolk under Coop was 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 great for me too. Living on the beach, living everything from uh, or living farther from from the other divisions, so we have to have long road trips, but quick three and threes, and you come back, you have your two days off. So it was that was first two three years in North America. I was enjoying, except for making uh, the nature of money. I was I think <laughs> I was making like everything out of the possible life I can. So. My wife was still studying in Czech, so I was living with the guys and everything. It was, uh, it was a different era for goods, for sure. Oh, us, us in the hat, we would take those $108 checks every two weeks, just take it to the Nino, just mm -hmm. done. No gas, no gas for the week. Oh, it was, it was tough. What did you think of the hat? Did, did you go to the hat or did we only I, go? I, we went over, yeah. It was, uh, you guys have the uh, bench on each side, right? That's the strangest, the old arena. Yeah. strangest thing. I couldn't change for the longest time. I <laughs> didn't know where to go. It was... It was tough, but it was just one game, so I can't really say I have many more memories about it. I just yeah. know this. I, I can't call it what I wanted to call it. And, <laughs> this place. And, and, <laughs> it's a dump. And, yeah. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. Proper way. Uh, and uh, Killer, for you, have had a stellar career so far. Um, for, for those of you or you know listeners out there that don't really know your uh, pre-NHL you know, career, how you how you were brought up like can you touch on that where, where you played yeah i went to harvard for four years which is kind of is that good yeah is that good? <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. so i actually got my degree but typically not a lot of guys that yeah. go to college that end up playing in the nhl spend all four years um we actually have a guy on the ducks that did that this year so um I ended up leaving harvard joining the norfolk admirals with radco um and you know we jumped on a team I think they had won 19 straight when I, or 18 when I jumped on the team. Um, we ended up winning 28 in a row. So I was like, pro hockey's pretty easy, you know, I just show up and <laughs> win in all these games. And But we ended up winning the Calder Cup that year. Syracuse, I was still with Goody. We kind of got called up together yeah. to Tampa. We were roommates in Tampa. Had a stacked team on that. Did you not yeah. have Panic? Was, yeah. was Panic on? Panic, yeah. Palat, Johnson, Conacher. Crazy. Um, am I missing any? Maybe. I mean, you said it. I mean, no, you guys crushed that. See, mm -hmm. It wasn't even close, right? Like, no, we we swept the last two rounds of the finals. <laughs> um, we had Dallas against us in the. In the oh finals yeah, Dallas. He, can he was not it. happy with us. Yeah. And what did you guys do? What was your uh, just celebration? I mean, uh, uh, you know, Virginia Beach, and I mean, speak on that. Yeah. So I kind of just jumped in on the team. I was still in the hotel. He. You were living in, at Virginia Beach, yeah. right? So he kind of was showing us around. What was that one place with the orange crushes? That was a good spot. <laughs> yeah, it's right on the first street. Yeah, um, yeah, I forget. We had a good time. Dolphin Listen, run. it's crazy. We, um, the parade and everything was pretty special. Like the fans there really embraced it. Um, we actually went back there for like a reunion 10 cool. years after, and it, it was a blast. So really good memories. It kind of sucked that we won the Calder Cup and then we switched affiliations to Syracuse. Because, you know, you win the cup or the Calder Cup in that that building, you want to kind of go back there and defend it. And yeah. we had to go play in Syracuse. So, um, but those were those were good memories as well, playing on, on like close, so close to campus. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, we started together in the NHL and roommates, me, him and Pierre Cedric Labrie. That was wild. And he, um, he's like a celebrity there, right? Doesn't everyone labs? just love Labrie? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, 
when we when I my time in Norfolk, I mean every we we were there. It's the whole you know Anaheim Ducks, the young pro, and they kept talking about Labrie. Yeah, he's kind of one of those guys that he's he meets a lot of people, and once you meet him, you never forget him because wow. partially because of the way he looks and he's so big and, and the way he speaks. um the way he speaks. So he got to know a lot of like you know the industry people, I guess wherever he goes and. Um, fans loved him obviously because of the way he played. I mean, he he was, he was so tough and, um, he was a great, he was, it was a fun roommate to have for, for me, I think one year or like the half year was enough and it was good (laughs) to get my own place, but you know, we had such a good time together, me and him and labs and backtracking a little bit back to Harvard, like social network, we wasn't the social social network based on heart. Like how much was that realistic? Just being in that vibe that it was, it, you know, did it It, match kind of what you went through? It was, it, it was pretty realistic. I think some of it was exaggerated a little bit, just, you know, it's Hollywood and they're trying to make movies, um, you know, more exciting. I think, you know, when they're busing like all the people to the parties and stuff, I don't know how realistic that was, but yeah, there's those final clubs that we were, I was a member of one of them. Um, we, cause there was, you know, that's how you went out. You went to one of those clubs. So, um, it was a lot of fun, uh, four years there. So. Cool. And then uh, Stromer, what about you? Just juniors, favorite juniors. juniors that's juniors. it. From Harvard to yeah, sorry, Niagara, Niagara Falls. Uh, yeah. Favorite junior memory? Like, I don't know. I, mean, I would, I would do anything to go back and do it again. Like, <laughs> wasn't the most fun time yeah, ever. Yeah, the like, just, oh, the problem is, like, I, I see these young guys, and like, I was the same way. Like, all I wanted to do was play in the NHL. It's like my only, and like, some days you like lose sight of like how much fun you're having being. 17, 18 years old, living away from your parents in a billet house, just like going to high school, just whatever. And uh, you, you're, you know, you're so ready for the next step that sometimes you kind of wish you could just go back and slow down and just remember those good times. Like even, you know, the first time you go to a bar and all that stuff, it's just like your eyes are wide open. You know what I mean? You got no parents to hold you back and you're kind of just on your own running around. So it's pretty fun. A lot of, a lot of good memories. And, my, you know, I guess for me, my best memory is my best buddy is like my best friend today is from junior. So. I never played there. I never would have met him. And we're, you know, best buddies today. So cool. Cool. That's what it's all about. Uh, you know, as we wrap it up here, I mean, I'll toss it up to you. I mean, I mean, you guys want to chirp each other? Or, I mean, is there any, <laughs> anything on your mind that you want to vent out? Like Stromer did killer deuce. I mean, you know, anything like no. is something bothering you with, no. with uh, two, two of these guys in the room here? No, I'm happy. We got these guys. I think they're uh, both really good professionals and good teammates and, I think anytime you add, I'm not just saying this because they're here, you got you add guys that have had some pedigree in their career and have had success and have been around and have, you know, gone through the grind. I mean, if you play six, seven, eight hundred games in the NHL, you know how like there's highs and lows and guys that, you know, make it out the other side are, you know, guys that you can really learn from. So I think adding any time you add guys like this to your locker room, it's very important. And I think that effect has been immediate. And um, I've played killer in a lot of playoffs and, you know, I played in the East for a while. So I'm kind of sick of doing that. So it's nice to, <laughs> nice to have them on our side and looking forward to playing together our first game, whenever that may be with yeah. the, uh, with the finger and, yeah. and with Goody, I think, um, you know, just, I think anytime you have guys in your team that, um, the other team knows when you're out there, that's, that's what you want. I think you want guys that, um, I mean, Crow kind of makes a joke that what are the, what is the other team saying about you after the game as a player? And, with Goody, it's always, you know, you got to be ready to battle and he's going to come get you and he's going to, he's going to hit you and he's plays strong and he plays tough and he sticks up for his teammates. And that's what sports is all about. And anytime you have a guy like that on your team, it brings everyone's level up a little bit and everyone's chest is a little bit bigger and it drags guys in the battle with you. And that's, that's what it's all about. Well said. Sorry. Uh, so you know, it's supposed to be a chirp and I absolutely. Well, he had his, he had his stage. He said what he needs. I mean, you can one up. I no, mean, is no, there anything no, no, that's no. bothering <laughs> you, you killer with, with Stromer? I, like, or I don't know if I could chirp him after, <laughs> after he said that. that fluffed um, you. Fluffed me up. <laughs> no, it's been, listen, it's been great. Stromer has been great. Um, for, you know, new guys coming in, I think, He's definitely one of the guys that's very vocal and helps set things up. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to chirp him <laughs> right now. I mean, maybe if we come in right, a couple you of weeks. You want me to get you going then? <laughs> you get me going. I'm, one, I'm, I'm one, getting I'm goosebumps one in here. It's a lot of positive I'm energy. And and it's the all new Anaheim love. Ducks, buddy. Yeah, it's all love. And yeah, you're one and all. I'm one and all on the course. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. He did. No. Uh-oh. Well, technically. We weren't no. in the same group that day. No, okay. <laughs> so, we're one. I think we're, we're, we're one and one, but. Um, with an asterisk with an asterisk because we weren't <laughs> in the same group but no i i actually like stromer's golf game so i was i can't even chirp it <laughs> but i will say okay so then if we want to start chirping he's from guys on the team he's known as like a sandbagger 
That's and, what, and, and for for those of uh, you know listeners out there that maybe haven't heard that term, what, yeah, what, what so is, a sand, define a sandbagger? So typically, a lot of hockey players when when they talk about their handicaps, they say it's lower than it really is to kind of impress you. Yeah. Um, but Stromer goes the other way and says it's a lot higher. Typically, when you're playing in like money games, he kind of takes advantage of guys. So <laughs> that's that's the that's a sandbagger. I don't know that he is that because I've only played with him once and I really like this game. But um, that's just what guys on the team have been saying. I, I would never say that. I'd have to play with him more. You never but, say that. You, is this say true? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been saying my like. Is this true? Is no, this, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm. I put all my scores in honestly. It's just uh, for some reason when I play against the boys, I just have my best rounds. So it's just the competitive juices. I know that <laughs> the next day in the locker room is just going to be banter and like you just grind just a little bit more because you know you just don't want to. You got to have, you know, some material for guys. Nice. And uh, Goods, I mean, have these two been bothering you with anything? Anything they can clean up on their end? Or <laughs> no. are, you, are you happy I, with these two? I'm the worst chirper, so I can't even start this. So don't ask me to chirp at somebody. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, more of physical uh, confrontation than you like word to settle. Wise, yeah, but. in the back alley, you like to settle it, hey? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> everybody's got their own thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know maybe stromer I'll, I'll end on you like what what are you looking forward to most about this upcoming season um i just think like the competitiveness um you know are we going to go 82 and 0 no obviously not but i think you know the way we lost games last year was like the thing that i think frustrated a lot of the guys and i think this year with um some of our additions and our new coach um it's going to be a lot different feel it's going to be um a lot more competitive and um a lot of accountability and i think um, you know, as players, that's, that's what we want and that's the environment we want to create. So, um, with that, I mean, there's just so much optimism and, um, that's what I'm looking forward to is to come every day and work to get better. I mean, some days it sucks when you, you know, you're getting yelled at or, um, you know, you get reamed out a little bit, but at the end of the day, we want to be the best versions of ourselves we can be. And, um, I think the new environment at the rink is, you know, pushing us to be that. And, um, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Well, for Stromer, Killer and Goods. I'm Emerson Edom. Thanks for tuning in to the Players Lounge, and we'll see you next time.